today we are going to read The Scarecrow's Wedding by Julia Donaldson, Miss Tegan's favourite author. Betty and Barley and Harry O'Hay were scarecrows. They scared lots of crows every day. Harry loved Betty and Betty loved Harry. So Harry said, Betty, my beauty, let's marry. Let's have a wedding, the best wedding yet. A wedding that no one will ever forget. Betty agreed, so they hugged and they kissed. Then Betty said, Harry dear, let's make a list. Just as you say, answered Harry O'Hay. So they wrote down the things they would need on the day. A dress of white feathers, a necklace of shells, lots of pink flowers, two rings, and some bells. Then Harry gave Betty a barley his arm, and the scarecrow set off on a hunt round the farm. They hadn't got far when they spotted some geese. Oh geese, if you'll give us a feather apiece, you can come to our wedding, the best wedding yet, the wedding that no one will ever forget. We will honk the geese, and they each gave a feather. A spider friend offered to sew them together. Hooray, cried the scarecrows. They hugged and they kissed, and they hurried back home and crossed dress off the list. Then Harry gave Betty a barley his arm, and they set off once more on their hunt round the farm. They hadn't gone far when some cows gathered round, and the bowels round their necks made a wonderful sound. Ring-a-ding-ding, ring-a-ding-ding. Oh cows, will you please come and make your bells ring for our we wonderful wedding, the best wedding yet, the wedding that no one will ever forget. Yes, smoothed the cows, we can tinkle our bells. Then a crab scuffled up with a necklace of shells. Some mice found two rings in a bin. They were certain the rings had belonged to an old farmhouse curtain. Hooray, cried the scarecrows. They hugged and they kissed. Pink flowers and the only things left on our list. Then Harry said, Betty dear, I can find those. Why don't I pick some while you have a doze? Pink flowers, pink flowers, buzzed a big stripy bee. I can find you field of pink flowers. Follow me. So the bee led the way and they travelled for hours till they came to a field full of pretty pink flowers. Harry stood thinking, I won't pick them yet. I'll need to find water to keep their stalks wet. Just follow me, croaked a lumpy old toad. There's a lovely wet pool at the top of this road. They climbed up the road. It was terribly steep. I'm tired, said the toad. So they stopped for a sleep. Early next morning, they came to the pool. This water, said Harry, it's beautifully cool. But now I need something to carry it in. A jug or a vase or a cup or a tin. I think I can help, said a small, squirrely snail. I can show you the way to a very fine pail. So the snail and the scarecrow set off on their way, but the snail was slow. It took more than a day. Betty was worried. What's happened to Harry? Where is the scarecrow I'm planning to marry? The farmer came by with a frown on his face, and he made a new scarecrow to take Harry's place. Good day, said the scarecrow. I'm ringing old Rick. He took Betty's hand and gave it a shake. Together he told her, we make a fine pair. You're really quite pretty, apart from your hair. Then he jumped on the tractor and told her, hop in. I'm a really fast driver. Let's go for a spin. But Betty said, no, I must wait here for Harry. He is the scarecrow I'm going to marry. We're planning our wedding, the wedding, the best wedding yet. The wedding that no one will ever forget. Reginald laughed. You'll be waiting forever. Forget about Harry. I bet he's not clever. I must be the cleverest scarecrow alive. I can sing lots of songs. I can dance. I can drive. I'm dashing. I'm daring. I'm cool as can be. I can even blow smoke rings. Just watch me and see. And he took out a big fat cigar from a packet. The farmer had foolishly left in his jacket. But smoking is bad for you, Betty exclaimed. Really, you ought to be feeling ashamed. Don't be a fusspot, said Reginald Rake. My smoke rings are staggering. Make no mistake. He struck up a light and he tried hard to smoke, but straight away started, but straight away started to splutter and choke. What happened next was completely unplanned. The light cigar stumbled out of his hand. It 
fell to the ground and it started a fire. Betty screamed, help, as the flames flickered higher. But Reginald Rake said I'd better be off, and he bounded away with a terrible cough. Then suddenly, who should appear on the farm but Harry O'Hay with a pail on his arm? Betty, cried Harry, my own future wife. He poured on the water and saved Betty's life. Then they picked up the flowers, they hugged and they kissed, and they said, now that's everything crossed off the list. So Betty O'Barley and Harry O'Hay wed one another the very next day, and everyone, even the snail who was late, said, don't they look happy, and don't they look great? This they agreed as they sprinkled confetti on Harry O'Hay and his beautiful Betty is the best ever, the best wedding yet. The wedding that no one will ever forget.